Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms. One of the most common tasks you may be called upon to fulfill as a communications technician or as an amateur radio operator is terminating an RF feed line or a 50 ohm feed line with the appropriate connector. Now, as a young ham almost three decades ago, you know, building your own feed lines and soldering PL259s was almost like a rite of passage. Oftentimes today, it's a lot easier for people just to go ahead and to go on to Amazon or other places and buy their own feed lines. I still make my own feed lines. Now, whereas we used to solder connectors very often back in the past, today typically we crimp the connectors using a variety of tools. I did a video about five years ago about terminating 50 RG58 cable with crimp connectors, and I used a stripper tool. Well, someone made mention of, well, you didn't talk about the dimensions, and I don't want to buy a stripper. So, in today's video, we're basically going to use very basic hand tools, along with a crimping plier, to terminate RG58 size cable with an appropriate RF connector. Here's an example of a garden variety RF connector for RG58 size cable. This is a mini UHF connector. You have your ferrule, your connector shell, your connector body and your center pin. If you look at this particular connector here, this is a crimp type PL259 and you can see that the connector shell will actually unthread from the connector body and that the center contact is actually a permanent part of the connector. And your BNC and TNC varieties will have that connector shell permanently attached to the body of the connector. You can see the different manufacturers of connectors can vary their dimensions so you know cable preparation as far as the amount of material that's removed from the cable in order to affix a connector can vary. In my earlier video I used a coax stripper and I'm going to show you how to do it with just a razor blade and a pair of scissors. Here's a standard garden variety ratcheting RF crimper that uses hex dies and this particular model is the Alpha AT350. Skycraft Parts has these things for like $16, so they're not terribly expensive at all. And you can see it's got ratcheting action. It said there's hex dies, and we're going to discuss what sizes we need for popular 50 ohm RF cables. The dimensions of the hex die cavities that you're going to be utilizing for these more generic types of 50 ohm RF cable are as follows. And what we're working with here is, is the ferrule where we sandwich the shield between the connector body and the ferrule and apply a crimp on the ferrule. And here are the sizes that are needed for your center pin crimp cavity for your crimping plier. Upon the center conductor size of the RG8 cable group you're working with, our cavity dimensions will be as such. The only tools we're going to utilize to terminate this cable are going to be a set of crimping pliers, an X-Acto knife, and scissors. Before we get started, take your ferrule and place your ferrule on your cable. Now take the body of the connector and using it as a gauge, we can remove outer insulation. And you can see where my thumb is located is where we would remove the outer jacket of this cable. If you're working with a connector such as this PL259 that has the center pin attached permanently to the connector, you index it just like this and make your cut back here. Again, measure where you're going to remove your outer jacket, which is the length of the body of the connector, and using an X-Acto knife. Make your cut around the jacket, and then I'll typically run one along the top, and this will allow us to remove the jacket from the cable. Now we need to trim our braid, so place the body of your connector along there, and you want the braid to run up and completely cover the tail of the connector and stop at the body of the connector. The easiest way to do that is, is just to fold your braid back. and give it a haircut. Now you can see we've completed
With our scissor, we need to ascertain how much of our dielectric we need to remove from our cable. And we want the tail of the connector to rest right up against here. So we need to remove this much from our dielectric. And our razor blade again. We'll score. And remove our dielectric. Now take and fold your braid back. Place your connector body on here and it should positively stop. Now take your center pin, place your center pin on your center conductor and that is how much from the end back that we will need to remove from our center conductor. And we can do that with our scissor. Take your center pin, slide it over your center conductor and the base of the center pin should rest up against the dielectric. Now take your crimping tool and your .068, bring it all the way down, and make your crimp just like that, then check your work. Take your connector body, slide it over top, push it in and you'll feel it snap. Fan your braid over top of the tail of the connector. Now bring your ferrule up. Slide your ferrule over the tail of your connector. And we're going to apply a crimp. and check your work and completed termination. The most simple way to check your work is going to be with a multimeter and you can just set it for continuity. I just like it when it makes noise. So you can see that we have continuity there and now continuity in our center pin. And what you do not want to have is, is you do not want to have continuity between your body of the connector and your center pin. So you check that right there and make sure that that's open. Another excellent tool to check your work is something like an inexpensive nano VNA such as this. And we can see the loss shown here of a little over two tenths of a dB at VHF. For this jumper, that's to be anticipated. I hope this helps. I really enjoy making content like this for you guys. I try to keep everything as on point as possible because I know your time is valuable. If there's anything that I did not cover or that you have questions of, please put it in the comments and I will uh, make every effort to answer those questions for you. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.